Every house here has firearms. Every single one. How many people here? 60 people in the whole town. Is a gas station? No gas station. Post office? No post office. Grocery store? No grocery store. Guns are a way of life in Maine, which makes it an unlikely place to be on the front line in the war over gun control. But for the first time in a generation, reform of the nation's gun laws is at the heart of a presidential election. I'm not here to take away your guns. I just don't want you to be shot by someone who shouldn't have a gun in the first place. Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Just remember that. We're not talking about changing. She wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Voters here are not just choosing between Clinton and Trump. They're also casting a vote in a referendum about background checks for gun sales. Question three on the ballot this November would close a loophole that allows Maine residents to do this. Hello? Hi there. Um, I'm just calling about the, uh, the Remington 1860. Yeah, I got a couple of them. And I just come around, I can, I can walk away with that gun for 225. Yeah. And do I need like a background check or anything like that? No, no. 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 All right. Okay. Take care. Bye. It's that easy. It wouldn't have been that easy to buy a gun from a licensed dealer. Federal law would have required me to undergo an FBI-run background check. But in states like Maine, residents can bypass that law if they buy their gun privately. The ballot initiative would close that loophole. Proponents call it common sense. But I've come to meet someone who says the new law which would also apply to guns loaned between friends, would encroach on a way of life. Bob! What brings you so far up in the hill, Pilgrim? <laughs> you do! <laughs> Bob Howe runs a hunting lodge. He also has a charity that takes veterans on therapeutic outdoor expeditions. For some, that involves hunting bears. Bob and his son have invited me into the woods to visit the place where veterans spend hours waiting for their prey. I should show him he were drinking root beer, not beer. He'll say, there's a bunch of cowboys driving around drinking beer in Maine. <laughs> tell us a bit about how the vets feel when they're out here. What do they tell you when they're... It's so incredible, Bob, to hear everything, to be excited. They're sitting here and it's starting to get dark. They hear... The heart starts pounding. Looking all over, they got binoculars and they're looking through the tent. They're going, I can't see no more. Son of a biscuit! They didn't, they didn't see nothing. They just heard something. It could have been a squirrel, but they heard something. We are hunters by nature. You're a hunter. He's a hunter. I'm a hunter. That dog's a hunter. We're all hunters. So it just brings that part of them out. So you think people in Maine, places like Maine, mm -hmm. the way of life is misunderstood? Yeah, yeah, maybe by others that live in a city, and we want them to stay there, stay in that city. Don't bother coming here. It's not good. Bad bears here, all kinds of bad. Big deep snow. <laughs> stay right there in that you city. You want to put them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bob said that to understand the culture of guns, I needed to shoot one. Are you ready? Uh huh. The conversation turned to the referendum on background checks. Enthusiasts mm -hmm. object to this, not for any specific reason, but it's more just a sense of encroachment on your rights. Absolutely. It's a, it's a feeling rather than we a do. specific rationality. No, there is some rationality. At the same time, it's a feeling that once you get the camel's nose under the tent, the camel's coming in. It ends with total, they have total control of your firearms. <laughs> You guys are not hurting the uh, grouse population at all. <laughs> I had fun shooting clay pigeons, and I can see the appeal of shooting animals for food. But I didn't feel that Bob had explained any specific objections to background checks. For that, I met with a gun rights campaigner. Wow, he's got it set up. I'm Steve McGinty, I live in Sumner. I'm a school teacher and a gun rights act activist. I'm a volunteer for Gun Owners of Maine, 
and a lifetime member of the NRA. Mm -hmm. Before we carry on filming, we should probably yeah. explain who this is and what Okay, doing. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce you, I'm sorry. This is uh, Alston, he's a friend of mine. Um, he's just gonna run the camera for us. It's the first time I've ever had anyone film me, film oh, yeah. them. Um, it suggests to me that there's maybe a, a lack of trust. Absolutely. My question is, if you want to lend a gun to anyone, what's the problem with just getting them to have a background sure. check? Sure, there's two problems. One, it's gonna cost money, because when I lend that friend that, that um, gun, it's gonna cost 20, 40, 50, 60 dollars. To solve what? How is lending my friend a shotgun a crime? This is Maine, this is not New York. We trust each other. What better background check can you get than somebody you've known all your life? That's a better reference than a computer. Where does your money come from? Um, donations and membership dues, but I assume that we're pretty much broke at this point. The reason they're broke is because the NRA has largely abandoned this fight. Instead, it's channeling its millions into getting sympathetic Republicans elected. For so long, the battle over guns in America has been a David and Goliath fight in which the NRA calls the shots. But in this contest, Goliath is billionaire Michael Bloomberg. After watching decades of failed attempts at gun reform at the federal level, the former New York mayor is bankrolling state ballot initiatives. No guns in the hands of minors. No guns in the hands of criminals. No guns in the hands of people with psychiatric problems. So why is this your problem? I live in America. And I'm a human being. Aren't we supposed to? I don't know what your religion teaches. Your mind teaches you to take care of each other. I've come to Maine's largest city, Portland, to see how Bloomberg's millions are being spent. Whose streets? Our streets! Street. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's knock on doors. The group campaigning for the background initiative has money for hundreds of volunteers and paid canvassers, as well as expensive TV ads. I met the consultant running the campaign. Our opponents are very much about trying to confuse what is, at its very core, a simple idea. If uh, a background check prevents someone from being shot or killed, in their world it's a 100% sample size of improvement. And that person who that background check saves or protects could be me, could be my family, could be somebody I care about, or somebody I don't know at all. Judy Richardson's daughter may still be alive today if there had been a universal background check in Maine. This is how she's always looked like her whole life. That, you know what I mean? She's always big, bright smile and big brown eyes. Darian was asleep when masked intruders burst into her room. Police say the target was her boyfriend, but the bullets struck Darian. She sat up, put her hand up like in a defensive move rolled off the bed and they shot again. It, it was like, she was shot like at five times. Darian initially survived the attack, but 50 days later, when she was recuperating, her family received a call. And when the police pulled up, I said, oh no. And the policeman, we knew it was a friend of ours. We know. So him and another officer came to the door. And I just looked at him and I said, it's not good, is it? He said, no, it's not. I could see it in his eyes. She died of a pulmonary embolism, a direct result of her gunshot wounds. Police still haven't found her killers, but they did find the weapon. The handgun had been sold without a background check by a private seller. He um, didn't remember which day he sold it or who he sold it to. So that's where it, it ends for them. They, and, and legally, that he doesn't have to say even if he does know. People think it's an inconvenience to go get a background check, but inconvenience is me bury a child or a loved one. That's inconvenience. The common sense case for universal background checks might explain why the NRA has chosen to limit its involvement in Maine. But behind the scenes, the NRA is still pulling strings, much of it through its chief lobbyist, Thanks, Chris Cox. Are you as fired up as I am? Yeah. All right. I'd been told Cox was in town at a closed door lunch. I wasn't invited and Cox wasn't doing interviews, but I went anyway. Uh, from the Guardian. <laughs> from the Guardian. From the Guardian yeah. Yeah. Could you give us just a sense of the, the background initiative and why the NRA is opposed to it? Yeah, I mean, philosophically, from a political standpoint and from a policy standpoint, it's been tried and it's, and it's failed. To think that if a criminal 
you know, in Chicago or anywhere else in this country is going to go to a gun dealer, fill out a federal form, take a test that they're probably going to fail anyway, pay a fee when they can get it off the black market or they can get one of their friends who doesn't have a criminal record to purchase it for them. It's just, that, that's, that's the way real life works. This is a political agenda. And given you are so strongly opposed to the measure, why is the NRA not significantly spending money here? And there are a lot of races at play. So we have a presidential race, we have Senate races that are, are critical to the future of the Supreme Court, we have governor's races, house races, and we have these ballot initiatives that we take very seriously. And at the end of the day, we're going to spend what it takes to win. Do you have a message for anyone who thinks there's a beginning of a sea change in this country, that what's happening here in Maine, that's what's happening in a presidential election, indicates that public mood is starting to shift on yeah. them? The national news media writes our obituary about every six months, and what happens is the American people respond by joining the National Rifle Association. Our membership is at the highest it's ever been. Our support amongst the American people are at the highest it's ever been. And those politicians who want to uh, try to exploit exploit tragedy, I think are going to wake up and find out that the American people aren't interested. And I think the day after the election is going to be a good day for freedom in this country and a really bad day for Michael Bloomberg and Hillary Clinton. The polls suggest the opposite. At least 60% of Maine voters support Bloomberg's background check initiative. And despite breaking new ground by campaigning openly for gun control, Clinton is ahead in the polls, both nationwide and in gun-loving Maine.